once again i welcome you one and all in today's part of the session building materials in construction let us get to know one of the oldest usage of the material that has been utilized since from the inception of the civilization and from the human activities the material which we are going to use is none other than stone before moving on to the stone in the previous class i have explained the concept regarding what is meant by building what are the different materials used and what are the process that has been utilized in converting the raw materials to desirable products so that it can be utilized for constructional phases at the different extents in today's part i have arised a question in the previous part of the class that is how the different types of the stones or the materials are been utilized in order to get to know the stones which is being used as a material for the construction it is first and primordial thing to know where does it occur in order to check that the occurrence it is based on the different sorts of a classification given by the scientists engineers and geologists let us get to know how do we going to get the stone normally you might have come across the term rocks the rocks are the huge solid mass which are present beneath as well as above the earth's surface and it is lying for a millions of years it may be subjected for various other changes but based on the classification of the rocks it has to be taken up and when it is taken for a construction purpose you need to convert it into a desirable part how do you going to take the rocks especially to the construction purpose we cannot directly take the rocks whatever is available from the earthen bed or the natural bed or the parental position meanwhile you need to extract it and the process of extraction of the rocks is what we call it as quarrying stones are naturally obtained from the quarrying of the rocks now if we need to classify what are the different types of the rocks there are different sorts of a classification let us get to know one by one first one is related to the classification aspect of the geological basis we call it as geological classification second one is mainly related to the appearance and the layer formation that we call it as physical classification and third one is mainly related to the chemical compounds or the substances or materials which are present in the rocks and hence we call it as chemical classification now in each of the rocks we have sub classifications let us get to know one by one now let us take geological classification geological classification is mainly based on which kind of the rocks are been originated especially from the cooling of the magma or whatever the hot or the molten lava which are being present beneath the earth crust when it has been arising against the gravitation and due to the inner pressure that has been exerted that will be arising from the core part to the crust and finally reaching to the topmost layer of the crust and that we going to call it as the eruption the eruption may be in a volcanic form or may be beneath the surface also or deep part of the earth crust also let us get to know the geological classification 
in the geological classification you come across three subclassification they are mainly the igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and then metamorphic rocks now as i have told that the igneous rocks are mainly arising out of the core or the molten lava which has been erupting and which is being cooled both above the surface and beneath the surface this above or beneath the surface has led to the another sub classification that we going to come across in three parts based upon the cooling rate we have furthermore classifications one is volcanic rocks hyperbasal rocks and then plutonic rocks volcanic rocks let us take upon for this volcanic rocks they are mainly surface originated part of the rocks due to the cooling of the magma which is exposed to the open atmosphere when it is exposed to the open atmosphere the rate of the cooling will be very much rapid due to the action of the wind and the product that has been obtained will be in a fine grain structures okay that is the feature of volcanic type of the rocks example for the volcanic type of the rocks is basalt it is basalt next if you going to take for the hyperbasal type of the rocks these rocks are obtained at the shallow level part of the earth crust that is beneath the earth crust at the shallow depth the pressure induced or the heat or the cooling rate will be lesser than that of the volcanic rocks because they have been earlier atmosphere sorry they have been exposed to the atmospheric condition here it is in a closed portion the rate of cooling will be very much lesser compared to the volcanic rocks and therefore the formation of the rocks which have been considered at the shallow depth is being classified as a hyperbasal type of the rocks they are especially fine grained with crystalline structure crystalline structure whereas in the case of the plutonic type of rocks these rocks are relatively at the deeper portion of the earth crust they are obtained upon the cooling rate over a millions of years not only a, like a set of like 100 years or 500 years the cooling rate will be very much slower in compared to that of hyperbasal and volcanic rocks therefore this plutonic rocks the cooling rate will be very much lesser due to the heat which is present in the earth's core and next another aspect if you going to study here plutonic rocks they are relatively very much harder in nature and they possess coarse grained crystalline structure coarse grained crystalline structure in nature so therefore example for the plutonic type of the rocks is granite okay for hyperbasal type of the rocks you can also take it as a limestone or dolerite so these are the different 
part of the classification which we come across to study especially in the igneous type of the rocks where we come across volcanic rocks, hyperbasal and plutonic type of the rocks. According to geological classification one part has been completed. Now coming on to the sedimentary type of the rocks. What is meant by sedimentary type of the rocks? The sedimentary type of the rocks it refers to the deposition or maybe the weathering actions are mainly responsible for the rocks to be carried away from one place to another place or maybe at the site of the origin of the place itself only that has been considered as a sedimentary type of the rocks. This sedimentary type of the rocks also have further classification. Let us get to know first one is the residual deposit. residual deposit, then sedimentary deposit, sedimentary deposit. Next we also have organic deposit, and chemical deposit. Now, residual deposit, what does it refers to? The term residual, it refers to the left out portion which is present at the earth's bed surface or the natural formation and it has not gone any changes after the disintegration process. They have been settled there itself only, they are not tend to move. That kind of the deposit of the rocks we call it as a residual deposit. Sedimentary deposit, these type of the rocks are being carried away from the one place to another place and then further deposited. Hence the name we call it as sedimentary deposit. Next organic deposit, these are being mainly carried out by the microorganisms and they are mainly responsible for the transportation of the rocks from the one region to another through the aid of the microorganisms either maybe in the form of the microinvertebrates or maybe bacteria are mainly responsible for this. Next chemical deposit changes in the chemical composition or maybe changes that has been taking place in the disintegration process lead to the formation of the new set of the features of the rocks and that we are going to call it as chemical deposit. So these are the certain part of the classification that you are going to study especially in the case of sedimentary type of the rocks, especially residual deposit, sedimentary deposit, organic deposit and chemical deposit. Now another things that we need to take upon care it is, if the rocks undergo any other certain changes, if the chemical composition changes or if any disintegration takes place, two or more minerals merge to each other, what is the next set of the reactions that takes place? The set of reaction which has been taking place is mainly due to the metamorphism. Okay? The metamorphic type of the rocks. Metamorphic type of the rocks as the name suggests that changes in the composition, changes in composition through the external factors. What are those external factors mainly responsible? Here it is the temperature, heat as well as the chemical active fluids. This chemical active fluids are mainly responsible for the changes of the rock surfaces. The changes of the rock surfaces or maybe whatever the rocks that we have already classified either may be igneous or may be sedimentary that transformation takes place and that 
phenomena we call it as metamorphism that rocks we call it as metamorphic type of the rocks what are those example limestone if you're going to take it that will be changing into the another sort of the material especially we call it as a marble okay limestone to marble is the metamorphism another thing sandstone this sandstone is being converted into quartz the different types of metamorphism that is taking place is the dynamic metamorphism plutonic type of metamorphism and thermal type of metamorphism these are the different sorts of the changes that is taking place mainly by three active part of an agents especially temperature heat and chemically active fluids hence care has to be taken especially in the selection of different type of the stones when you go into utilize it for the construction purpose now i think we have gone through the geological classification completing igneous sedimentary and metamorphic type of the rocks now let us get to know what is the physical sort of a classification the physical sort of a classification is mainly based upon the three different sub classification means upon the appearance whether they have a distinct layers or not whether they tend to split up in only one direction or multiple directions these are the criteria for the physical classification the physical classification of the rocks again it is further divided into three types what are those let us get to know first one is stratified second one is unstratified and third one is foliated now if you look upon for the term stratified it is an example where we going to see the different or the distinct part of the layers the examples are nothing but the sedimentary type of the rocks they have the distinct layer by layers that can be easily visualized that kind of the rocks we call it as a stratified types of the rocks unstratified we cannot be able to distinguish where are the distinct or the layers that has been formed it is very difficult to get to know clear observation has to be made by the geologist or an engineer and the portion where you cannot see any sorts of an distinctive layers and all that we call it as unstratified type of the rocks okay especially we come across in the case of the igneous rocks whereas in the foliated means tendency to split up in one particular direction only the phenomena or the tendency to split up in one particular direction only we call it as foliated type of the rocks the foliated type of the rocks they are mainly metamorphic in nature the foliated they are completely metamorphic in nature stratified are mainly igneous in nature and unstratified is completely as said sorry the stratified is sedimentary in nature unstratified is igneous in nature so these are the interrelation of the classification of the rocks based on the physical classification next going on to the third part of the classification especially we call it as a chemical classification what does the term chemical classification it refers to they have been mainly classified upon the majority or the dominating part of an element or a compound which is present in the particular rocks or the minerals 
okay based upon that we have three sorts of in classification one we have it as argillaceous calcareous and siliceous argillaceous means where the alumina content will be higher in nature aluminum content will be higher in nature example is clay if you're going to take the calcareous the calcium content will be more hence we call it as a calcareous in nature it is example is limestone next siliceous silica content will be more in nature okay the siliceous is example for the granite or quartz so altogether we have distinguished what are the different classification of the rocks starting from the geological classification especially igneous sedimentary and metamorphic again we have come across the sub part of the classification volcanic hyperbasal plutonic type of rocks under the sedimentary rocks you come across residual sedimentary organic and chemical deposit finally metamorphic rocks is a combination that has been changing with respect to the igneous and sedimentary rocks that lead to the formation of the metamorphism that phenomenon where the exhibition has been taking place in a natural aspect we call it as a metamorphic type of rocks then coming on to the physical part where the distinct layers have been found we call it as a stratified in nature unstratified you cannot find any sorts of layers foliated it is tendency sorry the tendency to split up in only one direction only we call it as foliated next coming on to the chemical classification we have argillaceous calcareous and siliceous based on the alumina calcium content and silica content in nature okay these are the basic necessities you need to remember throughout your life in the civil engineering aspect because stones are acquired from the channelization especially through the quarrying that is taking place in the open part of an atmosphere okay now we have distinguished various type of the rocks next when we have distinguished we can able to see some of the examples and all okay where are those example if you're going to see in normal aspects if you take taj mahal completely you can see it is made up of a marble also and ajanta and ellora caves basalt is also used naturally available they have carved out egyptian pyramid if you going to take it is nothing but the usage of the sandstone and the topping or the coverage was done but it is not visible due to the earthquake it was a white topping is done through the aid of the limestone next if you go to see the granite or maybe the quartz and all obviously they are utilized for the various sorts of purposes in civil engineering aspects now upon knowing all this classification of the rocks the next thing arises where the stones are been utilized okay let us get to know the concept uses let us get to list what are the uses of the stones stones are quarried from the earthen bed and where it has been utilized majorly the question arises here it has a multiple sort of an uses it is not restricted to for only one usages first concern is related to in the civil engineering aspect if you're going to take any of the building constructions and all okay for the small houses and all you go for using it and large scale apartments also we call it as large scale buildings second 
They are also used in an industrial aspect, especially in the case of the blast furnace and all, where the different metals are to be extracted. There, they are being utilized. The covering is being done inside the furnace, okay. Especially industrial usages. If it is in the case of a transportation, where it is used, obviously both in the case of the railways as a ballast and in the case of the roads, maybe a state highway or maybe national highway or any other major or minor district roads and all, you come across the utilization, maybe the boulders as well as even the coarse aggregates. Next, where it is utilized in other senses? In the structural part also, where the columns, the beams made up of completely a stones, okay, and the roof covering materials, okay, raising of the columns in olden temples or maybe any of the palace, the architecture wonder which you are going to see is completely made up of the stone itself only in an olden days, okay. Still it has been persisting in nature against any sorts of an actions from the external agencies. As a covering material, next where you can also find other usages of the stones. It is also used in the pavement purpose such as the footpaths and then other sort of an laying of the stones for the drainage purpose and all like that it is used. Another usage is in the case of the boulders or the aggregates, they are also used in the case of the treatment purpose where they are used as a filter. They are used as a filter in the case of both water as well as and the case of waste water. Seventh month, another usage is whatever the monumental things that you are going to see either maybe a um, uh, Kutub Minar what you are going to see or in the case of any of the temples or mosque or churches, the stone usages is not restricted today also. Therefore, they are utilized in monumental architectures purpose. In addition to this, we have other major as well as the minor usages, even the masonry which have been built especially for the construction of heavy construction purposes like in the case of the dams and or the bridges also, okay. In that cases, it has been utilized. It is not only restricted for this only the major aspects that I have explained now. There are n number of usages, but for you people to get to know, kindly go through all these things. In and around us, there are many sorts of an activities that has been utilized where the stone is a fundamental aspect for any of the construction purposes. Okay. Now we have come across for the usages. If you wanted to use the stone for the different purposes and all, maybe for a flooring purpose also for the roof or any other source of the things. Okay, what are the different requirements that you come across? Okay, what are those requirements? Let us get to see. To list the good requirements, There are n number of requirements. What are those? 
either it may be appearance, may be toughness in nature, what is its compressive strength, what about the weathering phenomena or action, what about the deposits or maybe the durability of the rocks or maybe for any other purpose, what are those considerations? Let us get to know the concepts one by one. Okay, the good requirements if you are going to take, there are different sorts of an aspects in the case of the good requirements. What are those? Simply if we utilize the stone for the building purpose, you need to see that the criteria for the selection, one stone which has been used for the foundation, same cannot be utilized for the roof also. Okay? Sandstone as well as limestone. Can you use the limestone for the foundations and all? Is it feasible? Get to know the answer for that. Okay? If not, then what is the else the case? So, what is the percentage of the water absorption? And what else you could able to study all these concepts? Let us get to know one by one. First one is related to the appearance. Appearance must be pleasing in nature, obviously. It should be pleasant and it should be free from the different spots or maybe any cleavages or any patches or maybe free from the potholes or what we call it as the clay holes. This is one of the requirements that we call it as a good requirements. Next, second aspect if you are going to know what is its compressive strength? The compressive strength for a good rock it should be greater than 100 Newton per millimeter square. It should be always greater than 100 Newton per millimeter square. What is meant by compressive strength? Obviously, what is the maximum load that any material able to withstand? Okay, so always the pressure which is being exerted, or what we call it as the load, is equal to the force by area. Load is equal to force by area. So therefore, that's why you're going to get it as in terms of a Newton per millimeter square. Next, third one. Third one is mainly related to the texture. Okay. What is the texture of the stones? There are very disastrous type of the things that you are going to get across when we go for seeing the rocks for the selection of the materials which are suitable for the aesthetic concern as well as even for the recreational purpose also. Okay? Texture also matters a much. What does the texture matters? It is mainly related to the crystalline type, fine grained and coarse grained. This is also the major implications normally required, especially even for the construction requirements for the stones. Next, let us get to know the another conditions, what it is. The texture, it should be fine crystalline structure, as I have stated, fine crystalline. It should be free from, again, the cleavages, cleavages and the different sorts of uh, cleavages shall not be retained there itself only or any patches shall not be present. That is what we call it as a fine grain texture or otherwise it will not be a clear texture in condition. Next, fourth one, fourth one hardness content 
hardness content is mainly determined by the scratching of the stones and that we call it as a hardness coefficient. This hardness coefficient has certain ranges to determine whether it is too much hard or not or in that particular cases the hardness is subjected to the wear and abrasion. Abrasion testing machine can also be utilized but here in this the ranges of the coefficient of the hardness is being determined in the form of the ratio that is what we call it as coefficient of hardness and coefficient of hardness should be always be equivalent to 17 equivalent to 17 we if it is being greater than 17 then we call it as a very high hardness content if it is being in the range of 14 to 17 it is a moderate condition another if it is being less than 14 it is possessing low hardness content so therefore that kind of the rocks cannot be used especially for the roadways or for the railways also okay these are the certain good requirements next other conditions are also coming across what are the good requirements what are those whether it is a toughness or maybe even the specific gravity water absorption and weathering agencies let us get to know that concept one by one in the next part of the class okay thank you